This is the way it might have been at uh, Fort Pitt. This is uh, trade. That's what it was all about. Uh, uh, Indian people trading natural resources, especially hides, to Europeans who were sending that uh, material back to Europe and then manufactured goods were coming here, blankets and tin cups and brass kettles and knives and beads and firearms. Uh, so there was a, an international trade going on 250 years ago. Uh, this was done by a woman on her honeymoon in 1817. She saw this view of the, of the city. You can see the point. Here's the blockhouse down here. There's the Bakewell glass factory over here. Of course, Mount Washington over here. Grants Hill here before it got leveled. Uh, here's Kilbuck Island over here on the north side. So she's, she's captured the whole thing, keel boats and sailboats. Remember the view that Emma Gibson gave us? No bridges. Well, that was 17. 1817. This is the next year. And look how, how it's grown up in, in just that short uh, time. We got steamboats on the river here after 1811. And already we see some kind of smoky haze over the city because these manufacturers and, and blacksmiths and uh, glassworks are already uh, burning wood and coal. Here are the salt works, Pittsburgh. Again, we see the, uh, the city in the background there. Look at the Bond Wharf with all of its steamboats lined up here, 1843. Look at the smoke plume emanating from, from downtown. And this is about where the Smithfield uh, Bridge is uh, today. And you can see first suspension bridge here. And now we see the Mon Wharf with all of its uh, steamboats lined up. You can see downtown. Still a lot of smoke coming up uh, here. But now we've got some fire control after 1845. This is about where we are. Here's the Allegheny River. This is 1862. Here's the Hill District. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a green hill. And, uh, and here's Fort Pitt Foundry here. Fort Pitt Foundry was cranking out the biggest cannons ever made in the history of the world, including a 60-ton, 20-inch caliber behemoth called the Rodman uh, Columbiad. And this was invented here in Pittsburgh. And that was right here. The History Center is right here today. So the Convention Center is here, History Center here. Here's the Strip District. And uh, in 1862, that's the Fort Pitt Foundry. This is a, uh, a painting just recently acquired. It was done in the 1920s by uh, an artist named Pettit. Yeah. And he did these things, these panoramic uh, views. But this is the Duquesne Works uh, on the Monongahela River. And you can get a sense of the vastness of one of these steel mills uh, in its heyday. It's just an amazing thing that was intended to document uh, a steel mill. Uh, it, this was done by the company. This was a commissioned uh, piece to sort of document their enterprise. Because this is pretty sanitized when you look at it. This is the company's view of itself. And it's not the smoky city view. We see a little steam coming out of some of the plants and steam engines, uh, little puffs of smoke. But uh, you can see it's a sunny day here. Uh, this is the way the, the steel company wanted to be known. Uh, these images uh, are by Jess Hager, who was the, the company artist for U.S. Steel for many, many years in the 1950s and 60s. Jess Hager is doing the same thing that Pettit was doing. He's showing steel making at its best. Uh, he's showing the clean and positive uh, side of it because this is for the company's annual report. That's a blast furnace by Jess Hager. This one was actually done in 1977. It's kind of amazing. They were still doing original art in the 1970s. Now, that, this is a Gorson painting, by the way. You know, you, you know that name as uh, one of Pittsburgh's premier industrial artists. You know, in the, in the 20s and 30s, he's painting uh, these, these scenes, these impressionistic uh, scenes of of dark, gloomy uh, Pittsburgh. But often there's a ray of hope or light 
in his paintings. We often see that glowing steel, that hot metal. In this case, uh, it's the white steam that's coming out of the JNL works on the Monongahela River. But it's, it's a pretty dark, forbidding view of Pittsburgh, unless you're a steel magnet, and, well, that looks like money to you. How do people live in this industrial environment? And these photos of housing and uh, work and recreation, mm -hmm. these are uh, very deliberate efforts to document the lives of the people who are working in this. These are government uh, surveys, as well as well-intentioned uh, progressives of that era, uh, and they're trying to figure out how can we improve the lives of these people. Because there's some uh, bad stuff going down. Uh, here's the Great Battle of Homestead. This is a lithograph, and you can see Homestead here, and uh, you can see in the detail uh, the uh, workers um, rioting and uh, battling the Pinkerton agents. Over there, we see this is the Strip District again. Here's the Hill District here. Hill's coming down. This is Liberty. Uh, this is the railroad tracks. This is 1877, the Great Railroad Strike. This becomes a national strike. It's a coordinated strike. And thousands of workers, railroad workers, are, are fighting. They're setting fire to railroad cars and locomotives, turning them over. Militia is called out and there's, there's great loss of life, and uh, it's a terrible scene. He Helen Webster did this watercolor on the 30th anniversary of the Big Mac, and here you see the city in the background practically dwarfed by this mammoth hamburger with two all-beef patties on a sesame seed bun. Of course, invented by Jim Delegati, Uniontown. This is a Western Pennsylvania innovation.